Printing with flexible filaments is no easy task. For starters, TPUs and TPEs are very hygroscopic and they are prone to absorbing moisture. So you'll wanna make sure you store them in a dry box or at least bake out the material before printing with it to ensure you've removed any moisture. Once you've done that, you still have to figure out how you're actually going to print it. Flexible filaments can have a very wide range of softness or flexibility from just slightly soft and flexible to something that feels like cooked spaghetti. And this is rated off a standardized scale called the shore hardness scale. For FDM or extrusion based 3D printer, 98A or 95A are fairly common uh, ratings. Then you've got NinjaFlex, which is one of the softer materials or most flexible materials that you can use on an extrusion based 3D printer. And that comes in at 85A shore hardness. So on the A scale, the lower the number, the more flexible it is. Printing with these filaments can be quite a frustrating experience from having to print at incredibly slow speeds to having the filament spit out from some direction of the extruder to wrapping around the extruder gear and not pushing out. There's all sorts of issues you can run into. With some of the less flexible TPUs, you can go ahead and print those out on most standard extruders at a really slow speed. But if you want to crank up the speed and you want to print with some of these really soft materials, you're going to need a pretty specific set of hardware in order to do so consistently and reliably. This is where the Omnia Drop Extruder and Hot End combo come into place. I had seen this setup earlier this year over on Chris Riley and the 3D Printing General's channel. The Omnia Drop Extruder and Hot End was designed from the ground up to be able to print with flexible filaments quickly and reliably. And the team reached out to me about a month ago now and asked if I wanted to test one out and install it in a printer that I had, which was perfect because my artillery sidewinder, when I moved, took a bit of a hit and the stock extruder on it completely broke. So I figured that this would be a perfect setup to install on the Sidewinder X1. I've printed with flexible filaments before, but it's always been pretty hit or miss and I've always had to print very slowly. So I'm really excited to see what the Omnia Drop really has to offer. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Omnia Drop hot end extruder. We're going to talk about the specs or the features that make up this hot end extruder combo. We're going to install it into the Sidewinder and of course we are going to print some flexible filaments. I hope you guys are excited and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting out, let's take a look at the features of this setup. The extruder uses a five to one gear ratio using planetary gears. This will allow for a smaller stepper motor to drive the entire extruder, which in turn will result in a lighter X gantry. This is important since it is a direct drive extruder and having less weight will mean that you can print quicker without having any additional ghosting or chatter from the weight being thrown around. The extruder uses dual stainless steel gears, which ensures that the filament is not going to slip and will provide you with very consistent extrusion. The cooling block or heat sink is designed in a way where the airflow is pushed up and away from your printed part, which is great if you're planning on printing ABS or nylon, which is prone to warping. The cooling block was designed specifically to allow for a very short extrusion path. This is really important for printing with these flexible filaments as it gives the filament less opportunity to kink, wrap around your extruder and just jam up like I previously mentioned. Looking at the heater block on the Omnia Drop, it uses a ring heater instead of your traditional heater cartridge. This means that the heater block is heated evenly on all sides and it provides the nozzle with very consistent temperatures. There's a secondary blower fan for layer cooling that moves a ton of air directly where filament is extruding. Certain filaments, especially TPUs, require very high layer cooling if you want to be able to do any sort of bridging or overhangs. The nozzle on this setup is a standard brass nozzle which uses the E3D standard sizing, which is great because if you want to swap it out for something else, you've got a ton of nozzle options. The printed parts of the Omnia Drop are printed in PETG with the planetary gears using a filament from Igis that's known for having very high abrasion resistance. This is great because with these gears spinning the whole time that you are printing, we want to make sure that they last a really long time. I will say that just looking at the Omnia Drop when I received it, I was very impressed with the amount of thought that's gone into its design. So now that we've talked about the specs that make up the Omnia Drop extruder and hot end, what does the install look like? Well, you are gonna have to print out a mounting bracket for your printer. Luckily, if you've got a Ender 3 or an Anycubic i3 Mega or a Artillery Sidewinder or a Prusa printer, those brackets have already been designed by other people and so you can just print them out and mount them onto your X gantry. For others that don't have an existing mount available, you will have to model a mount that goes onto the X gantry. I will say that the mounting solution on this is really easy and so even if you've just got pretty novice CAD skills, you should be able to draft up something that will allow you to mount this to your printer. Like I mentioned, I'm installing this in the Sidewinder and there was actually two options. So I found one that I really liked over on Thingiverse and I went ahead and printed it out in 
50% infill with four or five perimeters and it was in black PETG. The Omnia drop does come pretty much assembled, but I did need to screw the nozzle into the heater block and then screw the heater block into the heat break, which is really easy to do. You just screw the nozzle in all the way, back it out one turn, and then screw that onto the heat break and then tighten the nozzle down. We will need to make sure to retighten the nozzle once we've heated up the hot end because the hot end will expand when the metal heats. Now that we've got the Omnia drop mounted, we need to wire it to our 3D printer's board. For most people, this is gonna be a piece of cake where you just take the two fans cables, the heater cartridge and the thermistor and just take those cables and plug them into your board on the back of the printer, wherever it's mounted. For the Sidewinder, it's a little bit different because there is a little breakout board on the hot end that all those cables need to go into. I actually had to cut all of the cables and then solder them shorter and then plug them in with using heat shrink to clean them up. So it did take a little bit more time on the Sidewinder just because the way the Sidewinder is wired is kind of unique. But for most people installing this, it will be very easy to wire this in. Once everything's plugged in, you're gonna to want to very likely adjust the current that goes from the driver to the stepper motor. This is really easy to do. The main reason is that the Omnia drop uses a very small extruder motor, and more than likely, you've got like a standard large NEMA 17 motor that was powering your extruder. Luckily on the Sidewinder, it already had a really small motor on the stock extruder, so I didn't really have to adjust it much. But if you do have a bigger extruder or the standard motor that your printer came with, you should check to see what your drivers are set to and adjust them. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and turn on the printer, heat it up to 285, and then tighten the nozzle. I warn you, please do not over tighten it. You do not need to tighten it very much. It's just a little hand tighten. I had been installing this late at night during the, during the work week, and it was about midnight, and it was the final step that I needed to do, and I put too much force, I don't know what I was thinking, and I completely shattered the heat break. And this is not unique to this hot end, that can happen on any hot end that's out there, and I've done plenty of them and I know better, but please learn from my, uh, my mistake and do not over tighten it. All you're gonna be doing is taking one wrench to grab the heat break, another little wrench to grab the nozzle, and you're just gonna slightly turn it with your hand. You don't need to put, don't put your arm into it. So um, please, just, just a warning, do not do that because it sucked. Now that everything is mounted and it's wired in and it's tightened, the last thing we need to do is just adjust our E-steps, which have been provided by the manufacturer and is really easy to do with a terminal, and then run a quick PID tuning, which both of those things are standard and it's what you would wanna be doing if you ever swapped out it with any extruder or hot end on your printer. I'll put links down below on how to do both of those things, like article or video. I know that 3D Maker Noob did a really super simple video on how to PID tune your 3D printer. And I think that that is the most straightforward one that I've seen. So I'll make sure to put that in the description so that way you can take a look at what goes into that. Before you do any printing, I highly recommend that you take a moment and just look at the fruits of your labor because it looks beautiful. If you haven't already, I highly recommend going to grab a cold drink and just sitting back for a moment because now the fun starts. Omnia Drop does have recommended settings for NinjaFlex and Diabase X60. So if you do plan on printing with either of those filaments, then I would recommend copying the settings that they have on their website into your slicer and at least using that as a starting point. For me, I hopped over to Cura and I opened up one of the generic TPU profiles that comes baked in and I just swapped out the settings with the ones provided by Omnia Drop. For testing out this hot end, I had a spool of blue NinjaFlex and a spool of MatterHackers translucent blue TPU. I started off with using the NinjaFlex, using the recommended settings, and I sliced up a case for my phone, which I found on Thingiverse, and I actually have printed previously. The recommended save speed for printing with NinjaFlex is 40 millimeters a second, which is twice as fast as I have ever really printed it in the past. I was completely blown away watching this thing work and lay down this filament without any issues. When the phone case completed, I ran a few other smaller NinjaFlex prints with speeds anywhere from that 40 millimeters a second all the way up to 80 millimeters a second. At 50 millimeters a second, it seemed to print with very little difference in quality, but I did run into some under extrusion when I went north of there. I think that you can probably push it faster, but you'll likely want to spend some time playing around with it. And for me, 40 to 50 millimeters a second on NinjaFlex prints are more than sufficient. Next, it was time to print with the Matter Hackers TPU. This is a less soft material at 95A shore hardness, but still pretty soft. So I went ahead and imported the phone case once again, because I like options. They're different blues and they have different kind of like stretchiness or rubberiness to them and I sliced the phone case at 60 millimeters a second which is as quick or not quicker than I print most standard materials on 
any of my printers. On any of the machines I normally use, if I'm printing with a TPU at all, I would never dare go above 30 millimeters a second. So this was twice as fast as I would ever normally consider going. Well, I'm incredibly pleased to say that at 60 millimeters a second, the Omnia drop had no hiccups at all. And I was so pleased with the results that I ended up printing in 60 millimeters a second with this material for all the rest of my prints. I printed out a larger version of my buddy Chuck from Filament Friday's chest pond scaled up to 200% and it turned out beautiful. I even found a model over on Thingiverse of some TPU flip flops that I thought would be an awesome gift for my buddy's kid. The entire flip flop, including the black straps were printed at 60 millimeters a second, which to me is completely mind boggling. I was hoping for good things from what I had previously seen, but from what my experience has been like with these materials, I could not have been more pleased. Now this hot end won't have any issues printing with your standard materials like PLA, ABS, PTG, or nylon, but I think that if you're looking at this hot end, you definitely want to do some flexible printing. So that is the primary thing that I tested out on this because that's what really sets it apart in my opinion. Overall, I've been incredibly pleased with the Omnia Drop Extruder and I'm looking forward to being able to add grips and feet and buttons and cushions to projects in the future. I would say if there was a caveat, in my opinion, the main caveat is just going to be the install. It is quite involved and it's not unique with the Omnia Drop Extruder. Anytime you swap out a hot end and extruder and it's not like a one-to-one -one drop in replacement, it's just involved, like from the mounting solution to the wiring solution to the configuring of firmware, it, it takes some steps and you definitely will want to make sure you know your way around a 3D printer. If you feel comfortable with 3D printers and how they operate and this is something you're interested in, I, I think it is a fantastic solution for being able to print with these flexible filaments that most other extruders and hot ends will just struggle with. Now, one last thing that I do think is worth mentioning is the price of this. So the entire setup is around 160 to 162 US dollars, which isn't cheap for a hot end and extruder. There's a lot of low priced options out there, but this is intended in my opinion for someone that's looking for a performance hot end and extruder that has very specific capabilities. So if you're someone that's building a printer from the ground up and you're looking to use really quality components, or if you're upgrading your printer and want to get something that's really top tier, you know, or again, if you are someone that just needs something that can print with flexible filaments consistently and reliably, then this is the setup for you. If you're someone that's trying to get just the cheapest components you can, then certainly there are other options out there. But for what this is trying to accomplish, I think it is really impressive because this also is not a huge team. I don't know the exact scale of this operation, but it's definitely a much smaller operation than some of the other manufacturers out there. And with what they've done so far with this Omnia drop, and again, the level of detail they've put into it, it is a really impressive kit. If you are interested in finding out more or purchasing one for yourself, I will place links down below in the description. And if you've got any questions or something I didn't answer in this video, please let me know. The manufacturer is really awesome at responding. And so if there are questions that you have that I don't know the answer to, I have no problem sending them over to Omniadrop and seeing what they say in response to that. On that note, I hope you guys are all doing really well and enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below to my Patreon. As always, huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters that allow me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys. On that note, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. This has been Daniel from ModBot, and I am out. Peace, guys.